Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee with Father Gray today on this Wednesday. It's a beautiful day outside, probably some more snow later today. Today, we have a very special coffee because we're going to be joining the folks at Mount Angel for the candidacy mass for our friend, Anthony Shumway. Candidacy is one of those steps along the way to ordination. Now it's already started, so we're gonna quickly join so you can see the procession a little bit. I can see him walking across the screen. Okay, sharing the screen. Oh yeah, doing it now. Okay, <laughs> sharing. Oh, I have to do a thing. I have to do All right, sorry. It really hasn't started. They're just oh. hear that. Put your thumbs up if you can. Okay, cool. So you're looking at the live stream, live streaming from Mount Angel. I'm gonna put this in the chat. So in case this goes badly, you can also follow on yourself. So um, the procession has just started. They're coming in through that bottom left of the entry of the screen, you know. It's, that's where the sacristy is. They're kind of going to walk around the outside of the church and then forward. It's kind of a big deal. So, uh, first of all, putting that, do I even have the ability? Yes, I still have the ability to chat. Cool. What is candidacy? Candidacy is a step along the way to a priesthood. That's kind of the basic thing, but specifically, candidacy for what? Candidacy for holy orders. In just a second, uh, Anthony is going to walk by in the procession. So you can see the procession going the wrong way with the cross and the book of the Gospels. And then a couple guys, four guys. One of those is Anthony. He's the one on the bottom left. And he's about to bow. He's going to bow and go left. Hi, Anthony. Hi. Wearing an alb, which is kind of our habit. There's Anthony, uh, which is the habit for this kind of thing. Well, the procession stopped there for a second, and now the procession's going to continue on, and they're going to do that. So, is it the bishop or the abbot? It's going to be the archbishop today. So now that we've gotten a little bit of Anthony, let's begin with our prayer like we usually do. And then go back and I'll, I'll give commentary to things and so on. They're just processioning and it'll take a little second. Yeah. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. The same Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. Now we're going to go back to the candidacy mass right now. The procession is still going on. They're just getting up to the altar. All right. And again, can you see and hear that? Thumbs up if you can. Great, super. All right. So what we have there are a monastic community. Mount Angel Abbey in Mount Angel, Oregon. St. Benedict, Oregon, actually, technically, but it's in the Willamette Valley, lovely place. The celebrant for this mass is Archbishop Sample, the Archbishop of Portland. And there are also a couple other bishops there present there are four guys who are receiving candidacy. They are from our diocese, also Las Vegas, I think, and a couple others. We'll hear more about that in a second, I'm sure, once it gets going. This is also very much part of like the normal life of the seminary, because these are those kinds of things that have to happen. 
That's our stretch of sample. Mass is going on. He's wearing a pallium. So that thing over the chasuble that kind of is hanging down the back, it also hangs down the front. It's a uh, particular piece of vesture for archbishops, especially within their metropolitan see. So this being that kind of mass, he is wearing the pallium. And you can hear the, the seminary choir singing. at choir stalls, you see the uh, monks of Mount Angel Abbey. Some of them are priests also. That is the variety of celebrants of the Mass. There's also a lot of the church that's behind where we can see, which is the pews. And in the first pew, it's over on the left when we ever see that again. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with when bishops celebrate Brothers and sisters, they begin with, with, with you. And so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. To Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done. So the way this will go is that the hand to see ritual will happen before and after the homily. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And apparently they're doing the bird mass with three voices. This is the Kyrie. Let us pray. O oh God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that they may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. There's a proper Mass, which is for candidacy, and they're doing it. That was the prayer from it. The rubrics say that after the, the biblical readings, the celebrant, if it is a bishop, holds the mitre and the crozier and sits in the cathedral. And there is a homily and then happens the thing. So we're just going to follow them along with the liturgy of the word.
I'm not sure that that deacon was supposed to be from reading the books this, of the prophet Jeremiah. He just stood up and did it. So we're making it the happen. The word of the Lord came to me thus. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord answered me, Say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm, they're singing, you are my inheritance. The history of this ritual has a lot to do also with kind of the beginning of formation. And so historically, there's this thing about <clears throat> the clerical state. When does it begin? Technically, according to law today, that begins with the ordination to the diaconate. But historically, it would also be considered as the beginning of the formation. So the receiving of the tonsure, the, you know, the, you know, when they cut your hair over here. And the psalm that they do when they do that is this. Lord, you are my inheritance. At the gospel, the priest or bishop imposes incense. When it's a bishop, he does so while seated.
this Alleluia that they're singing is one that's really well known in America because it's published by Oregon Catholic Press. It's also very much a Mount Angel thing. It's part of their history of liturgical music that then is seen in parishes throughout the United States. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At a Mass when a bishop presides, after the gospel, he kisses the book of the gospels, the evangelarium, and then can bless with it like he just did. The seat is placed before the altar because that's where the ritual will happen. Archbishop Sample is a very good preacher. Let's see what he has to say. The new liturgical rite of the placement of the microphone. <laughs> it's such a joy uh, to be with all of you here today uh, to celebrate this important step in the lives of these four men. And I'm very grateful to Abbot Jeremy and to Monsignor Betchart for again, uh, giving me the privilege uh, and the honor of celebrating with you this morning this rite of candidacy for these men. Men, you're coming to that stage of, of taking another step forward in your journey, in your discernment. But today is about a firm step forward. very firm step. You know, in the reception of the ministries of acolyte and lector, yes, they are exercised in a sense of preparation for ministry in the sanctuary. So, in a sense, you do step closer to the altar, if you will, in those ministries. But those ministries are also open to those who are not on a vocational path toward the diaconate and the holy priesthood. Candidacy is something different. Candidacy is a firm decision. Your decision and the church's decision, don't forget. A decision to complete your studies for ordination and your preparation, your formation, spiritually, humanly, academically, pastorally. In other words, 
you've been on a vocational discernment path until now, but, but now it, with reception of candidacy, there's a certain firmness to your intention, a firmness to your discernment. You're saying before the church today, yes, yes, I truly believe the Lord is calling me to holy orders. But what are you preparing for? That's an important question, and it's a question that has come to me in a very stark way more recently, and that's why I want to reflect with you briefly on it today, dear sons. And I speak to all of you in the seminary community, especially those men who are preparing, discerning for priestly ordination. And I'm going to start with one example that has nothing to do with ordination and priesthood and diaconate. It has to do with marriage, which is also a vocation, right? Very holy vocation. I, was, when I was a young pastor, was giving a spiritual help to a couple who were in real trouble in their marriage. They were into the early years of their marriage and things were really tough and were falling apart. And as I spoke with this young couple, the bride finally sort of admitted that her goal in approaching the day of marriage, her goal was to be married. Her goal was the wedding. And she had not thought enough about marriage. That she was preparing herself not just for the wedding, but for the covenant of marriage and all that would entail, all of the sacrifices that would mean the ups and the downs of trying to live faithfully that vocation. And she was in crisis. Let me bring it closer to home. I was speaking one time to a young priest who was really struggling with his priestly vocation, <coughs> ordained less than 10 years. <coughs> and he really was having a hard time. And he had to admit to me that his goal, while well, all the while he was in the seminary, his goal was ordination not the priesthood. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? But there's something there. Men, you are aspiring to become priests, to live the life of a priest, to live the holy vocation of the priesthood. You're not just preparing for the day of your ordination. Your goal, in other words, shouldn't be to get ordained. Your goal should be the priesthood and to be able to lay down your life for that in imitation of Christ, whose priesthood, pray God, you will one day share in. You see, I think, I think especially maybe in our culture today, there's this great uh, need to accomplish and to have goals and, and you set for yourselves and so you look to that day of your ordination and maybe you dream about it sometimes, maybe you fantasize about it sometimes, maybe you're already looking through the catalogs to pick out your chalice and your vestments. Is your goal a life of sacrifice? A life of laying down your lives for Jesus and for his beloved bride, the church? Is your goal to be a man like Christ, 
who is willing to give his all as a spouse for his bride, the church, who is willing to lay down his life and endure what that means on a day-to-day -day basis. Because for the married couple after the wedding <laughs> comes the reality of waking up day after day after day with each other and learning day after day to lay down their lives for each other selflessly. For the priest, it's to lay down your life every day and then to endure the sacrifices that come. And they are going to come. Don't, don't idealize or fantasize about what the priesthood is all about. Don't, I, don't make it some sort of unrealistic reality. Any of these priests here can tell you there are struggles at times. And so you have to be prepared, not just for the day of your ordination, but for every day that comes after. You have to be secure that that is what you are aspiring to, to imitate Christ in laying down your life for your people, sacrificing your own desires, your own will, at times your own comfort to serve the other as Jesus did. He's the example. You've been taking these steps forward. Maybe college seminary, pre-theology. Ooh, then you make it to theology. You've been marching along. You received lector, acolyte. You drew closer to the altar, to the mystery of Christ. Now you take this step today, which is a step even closer. After this rite, we will go into the celebration of the Most Holy Eucharist, in which we renew at this altar the Paschal mystery, passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. If that's what you aspire to, to be able to stand one day at that altar and celebrate this sacrifice for the people of God. But you're also called to imitate the mystery you handle in the Eucharist, the mystery of Christ offering himself for us, as you will one day offer yourselves for him and for all of his holy people. We rejoice with you today that the Lord has called you to labor in his harvest out of compassion, the compassion of Jesus for the crowds. And that God, like Jeremiah, has been forming you from all eternity for this vocation. May you be inspired and filled with the Holy Spirit to live it well. Thank you, Archbishop Sample. <clears throat> And so, therefore, when you are called by name, come forward and declare your intention before the church assembled here. James Patrick Ladd from the Archdiocese of Portland in Oregon. Present. Maximiliano Munoz from the Archdiocese of Seattle. Present. Anthony Scott Shumway from the Diocese of Salt Lake City. Michael Tyrell Williams from the Diocese of Las Vegas. I'd like to note those other two things, lecture and acolyte, those rituals are found in a different book. This ritual is found in the book for the ordination of priests, bishops, and deacons. Beloved sons, the pastors and teachers in charge of your formation and others who know you have given a favorable account of you, and we have full confidence in their testimony. 
in response to the Lord's call. Do you resolve to complete your preparations so that in due time through holy orders, you will be prepared to assume ministry within the church? I do. Do you resolve to prepare yourselves in mind and spirit to give faithful service to Christ the Lord and his body, the church? I do. The church accepts your resolve with joy. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to our Lord God and God that in his kindness he may pour out the grace of his blessing on these servants of his who desire to devote themselves to the ministry of the church. That our brothers who have declared their intention to give their lives and priestly service to the church may draw closer to Christ and be his witnesses in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that these men may share the burdens of others and always listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That these men may become ministers of the church who will strengthen the faith of their brothers and sisters by word and example and gather them together to share in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Archbishop Sample, Abbot Jeremy, Monsignor Bedshark, and all the members of the Episcopal Council. May the Lord strengthen their faith, increase their love, and fill them with heavenly wisdom as they labor to cultivate priestly vocations in the church and form those whom the Lord has called. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord bless the dioceses and religious institutes represented here with abundant vocations so that the people of God may be served and fortified by the grace of the sacraments and the preaching of the word, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that they may govern their people justly, work for the common good, and uphold the moral law, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, and that all who are our suffering brothers and sisters, particularly those enduring the terror of violence and war, the elderly, the sick, and the dying. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Be attentive, Lord, to our prayers for your sons who wish to dedicate themselves to your service and the service of your people in the sacred ministry. In your love, graciously bless them that they may persevere in their vocation and that in holding fast with undivided charity to Christ the priest, they may be worthy to take up the apostolic mission through Christ our Lord. Amen. And that's the ritual for the admission of candidacy. It is now complete. Let's see if we get to see Anthony one more time. Well, this is fun. They're going to be attending the rest of the mass in the choir with the monks. And that's that. It will go on and the rest of Mass will be as normal. All right, everyone, thank you. That was the special thing for Coffee with Father Gray today. Anthony Shumway is now a candidate for ordination so we can ordain him a deacon. And that's gonna be coming up in this coming summer. We're looking, um, I forget the date right now, but I think it's gonna be like June 28th, 29th, somewhere around there. Cool. Well, let's just keep praying and call it good. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, Look with, down in mercy on your people who cry to you, and by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, her spouse, 
of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us for the special coffee with Father Gray, which was actually Anthony Shumway's admission to candidacy. And congratulations to Anthony. Fantastic. Good times. All right, everyone, have a lovely, lovely rest of the week. We'll see you again on Saturday. All right. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Thank you for doing that. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father Gray. Thank you. Wonderful. Yay. Yay.